probably not be muted while I'm talking. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Magical Development Workflows or the Magic of Development Workflows. I'm really excited to be here. This is my first Drupal for Gov webinar. I think I've watched a few on YouTube, but I have definitely not uh, presented at one or attended live. So this is pretty exciting. Um, feel free to ask questions in the chat at any time. I can see the window, but uh, if I miss it, uh, I'll have someone point them out. I'm happy to stop and have a conversation at any time. Uh, we're only 12, 11 participants together, so we can make this conversational. Um, so let's get started. Uh, today, we're going to go on a magical journey of development powered by Terminus build tools. Uh, we'll use Composer to install Drupal, GitHub to look at pull requests, and we'll see how we can set up continuous integration with Circle CI to do some static code testing. All of this will go ahead and deploy to, of course, Pantheon's platform. This presentation was originally created by myself and my colleague, Matt Cheney, but I'll be delivering it by myself today. Uh, Pantheon is what we call a web ops platform. A web ops is website operations. At Pantheon, we believe that everyone who is responsible for a website, so your developers who write your code, content writers who write the blogs, the digital marketers who measure the success of those blogs, all of those people are integral to the success of your website. And we believe that web ops uh, is a set of practices that brings together these developers, designers, content editors, and key stakeholders. So everyone whose job it is to affect this website in any significant way uh, needs to think of themselves as on this one team working towards the same goals. And we'd like to set you up with some reliable architecture to be able to do that. Although this presentation is heavily influenced by the tools that we have available at Pantheon, and obviously the tools that I'm maintaining at Pantheon, uh, you should be able to replicate this architecture to the deployment platform of your choice. So you can take components of these things and put them together on your own or use other tools and starters that are available for spinning up continuous integration or deployment sites. So while this presentation is specific to Pantheon, I hope that it'll either inspire you to use our build tools plugin or go ahead and play around with other CI tools that are available. So to make this presentation a little bit fun, um, I, I decided to come up with this fictional story about a demo city, a government city website that's embarking on creating a website project. So I think we'll enjoy that. Uh, always open to feedback. So let me know what you think at the end of the presentation. All right, so there's a team at Demo City who wants to go digital with their government services. They want their constituents to be able to complete transactions online. So things like paying a parking ticket, renewing a license, submitting a report about a crime, or even booking a local tennis court. And they've seen these things being implemented by various cities across the country. So this is my very own city of Berkeley. Whenever I wanna play tennis at the local court, I should have to go online to the catalog and book a time and pay for it and everything. Uh, so in order to create this digital experience, Demo City decided they're gonna do some research to see what other cities are doing to digitize these services. And after looking at a couple examples, they decided that they'd put out an RFP and select a development agency to help build this new site. So before we jump into who they selected, let's find a little bit about our Demo City team. So we've got three characters on this Demo City team. The first is the designer, Joseph, who wants to aggregate all of the city's digital and physical assets into one consistent brand and theme that's recognizable for the city. He also wants to make sure that this digital experience that they're gonna build is accessible and easy to use for their constituents. Uh, the second person is Ashwin, our product owner. He's the liaison to all of the stakeholders at the city. He's responsible for making sure that all of these new digital services are operating correctly and that constituents are able to complete tasks like paying for a parking ticket on the website. And finally, as the chief digital officer, Alice is the primary stakeholder on the project. She wants to be able to promote and celebrate these new silly city services going online and create a case study on the project. She also needs to approve any major changes and see previews before these pages go live. And of course, as all of you know, there are a lot more members of these teams that can benefit from city websites that are dynamic. You know, maybe there's a digital marketer who wants to be able to share links to an emergency announcement or a food truck schedule, uh, or maybe public swimming pools are being closed for maintenance. And it would make their job much easier if all of these things were online and in a format that can be shared on the city's social media. Uh, there's probably a CTO who wants you to have a modern tech stack so they can get some, you know, press coverage about that. 
there might be a crucial content writer who wants a central place to add or edit or change context. So there's a lot of people on these city digital teams and I am cognizant of that, but I wanted to pick three characters that we could follow through uh, this journey of uh, a development workflow. And then on the other side, on the agency side, here are the technical members of the Museo de Art Agency, which is kind of a demo agency we use at Pantheon to build websites and showcase the development workflow. Uh, we have two characters here. We have Julia, the technical lead. She wants to set up a best practices developer workflow. So something that will be sustainable for the developers at the city in the future to be able to pick up for maintenance uh, and to update their site and also modern enough for her de developer team to gain experience. Uh, this project is really great for the agency because you know they get to work with government clients, they get to put together a case study. They have a lot of great talking points like we just digitized city services in an accessible way. We built a good UI UX. Uh, so all, all wins as far as that. And then we have a senior developer, Nassim, who wants to work with a uh, modern tech stack and wants to teach her team how to use development practices uh, in, in the process. So that's just kind of the different goals that everybody on this team has. And like we said, WebOps is about bringing all of those people together to the table in the beginning, understanding what their goals are and what their functions are. Um, and then seeing how the scaffolding that we put together for the project helps these people bring their goals to life. We'll start with our technical lead. So, you know, Julia has gone through discovery. She really needs to get this project set up for her team and start working on some features. She's interested in using Pantheon as a platform, clearly because I work at Pantheon, that's gonna be part of the story. Um, so she does some research and finds the Build Tools plugin. So Build Tools is a plugin that I maintain at Pantheon that allows you to connect a CI service, so a continuous integration service and a Git provider like a GitHub or a GitLab uh, to Pantheon. And then we'll also have Composer support for you. We have minimal automated testing built in that you can build upon and some recommendations for what your development workflow should look like. So Julia thinks this is great. This is what she's looking for. And she gets started uh, putting that together. Uh, build tools is really great uh, for new projects. Uh, if you want to have some customization on which Git provider you're using, we also provide some extra terminus commands. So that allows you to customize uh, and kind of insert automation into your workflow and some templates uh, that can help you with composer updates and automated testing. Um, so the good thing about using build tools is that you don't have to put all of these pieces together yourself. They're already connected and ready to go. And so you can avoid some of that complexity of starting those repositories all by yourself. Uh, so far we support these three combinations. So GitHub, CircleCI, GitLab, GitLab CI and Bitbucket and its pipelines. We're currently working on a GitHub Actions integration because that is the new popular thing that everybody wants. And it'll be really be great for our clients to be able to use GitHub uh, to host their code repository and then also have Actions, which is plugged into it. So we're looking forward to that. There's an open PR. So if you're interested in testing that, you should totally reach out to me um, and I'd be happy to get you connected. We're also working on, uh, and it's a little further out, but it's a convert command. Uh, it'll allow you to take an existing Drupal or WordPress site and convert it onto this continuous integration workflow and get you set up to deploy to Pantheon. So if you're interested in either of those, we have incoming PRs that, uh, I guess, outgoing PRs. Um, and uh, I'd love to get anyone's feedback on that because it's always good to have more eyes on pieces of software that are particularly complex. Um, so, oh, we're in the middle of my animation. <laughs> so Julia wants to implement the build tools workflow to build, start building this demo city site. Uh, the first thing she would do is install Terminus, which is Pantheon's command line tool. And after that, she can go ahead and run the Terminus build project create command. I'm gonna try and see if I can refresh the slide. But it looks like we missed the beginning of the command. But what this command does, it starts creating a scaffold of pieces. It'll create a Drupal site. It'll set up the repository on GitHub and get the code pushed up. It'll configure CircleCI uh, with the keys that you've given to it to uh, deploy to Pantheon. Generally, as you can see, this script takes uh, 10 to 15 minutes to run. And so it isn't really good for live demos. So we created these animations for you to take a look at what what kind of happens when it's pushing code and getting everything set up. Of course, today the neighbors across the street are cutting their grass, like the one day that I'm having a presentation. <laughs> 
Happy Friday. Uh, and then once the site is set up, Julio senior developer Nassim can get to work on understanding and setting up a developer workflow. So the way that the developer workflow we have set up on Pantheon works is that uh, you get three environments, dev, test, and live. I think this is pretty basic across many organizations as well. It's not something that's unique to Pantheon anymore. Each environment will have code and content. So you'll have a database uh, and you'll have your code. And having those separate environments really allows you to isolate your work um, and not impact your live site's availability when you're doing maybe some really heavy testing on a dev or test. Um, so, you know, you push up new features to dev. I'm sure you know how this works, but I'll talk through it. Uh, so dev is where you make your code changes and push any new functionality. Once that code is working, you can go ahead and deploy it to tests. There really shouldn't be any surprises there since you know exactly what you're deploying up. And then on the test environment, you and your team can QA your work. You can think about, you know, ex if you want to see how exactly it'll look uh, at Pantheon, we can sync the files down from live for you. So you can see a, an accurate copy of what's going to happen when you deploy this live. Uh, and then when you're ready to go, you can go ahead and deploy that to live. Um, if you're interested, you can also sync those files and that database down to the dev environment. And then, you know, you can see all of those things there. I personally like to think of dev as a source of code changes, uh, test as a place where, you know, code and the database comes together to see something, uh, you know, it's kind of that testing environment that gets feed from both sides. And then live is just, you know, uh, that's your live site to the world. So Nassim, our senior developer at Museo, wants to make sure that her dev team uh, is able to collaborate, work in parallel, iterate quickly. And so you have a bunch of developers that are all working on different features. Um, and you know, she wants them to be using Git branches and pull requests so they can learn from each other and do code reviews. Uh, she's interested in tools like Composer to speed up that workflow and also set good working examples for her developers. Um, so she consults the Pantheon docs to see uh, what she can use for this project. I apologize for flaky transitions. Uh, so in order to test the developer workflow and showcase it for her dev team, she decides to install some of the basic modules that this project will require. Uh, in this case, that's address and panels. And that way she can use these very simple modules uh, to demonstrate what pull requests and code reviews look like for her dev team and show them how everything will work from, I'm working on my local machine, I've pushed up this module, I've created a pull request, I'm going to review that pull request with my team, show them how the code review process works, and then merge that in, and then show them how the deployment works uh, to get to Pantheon. Uh, this is another animation of her installing panels on a separate branch using Composer, um, and then pushing up that work uh, to the main repository on a branch. Someone in the living room is getting text messages. <laughs> I'm, I'm visiting family uh, for the week. And so it's just, it's very lively and very fun to give a presentation in that environment. <laughs> it's very different from my apartment back home. All right, uh, so because she's using Git branches and pull requests on GitHub, uh, this is what their pull requests might look like. They'll be able to separate out chunks of their work and review them one by one. Here you can see a couple of pull requests with some new features like adding the address module and the panels module. Uh, and you can see though from the little tick marks that the continuous integration test has passed uh, and stuff is ready for review. Going a little bit more in detail, this is what a pull request might look like for adding the address module. Uh, and for each pull request, as you can see, we have an automated system that adds uh, the specific multi-dev environment. So at Pantheon, uh, in addition to your dev test live, we also give multi-dev environments, which are disposable development sandboxes that you can use uh, for any Git branch. So any Git branch that you push up, you can spin up a dedicated environment for that. Specifically for build tools, uh, when you push up, when you open a pull request, it'll spin up a development and it'll spin up a multi-dev environment for that pull request. So maybe you built a really uh, great feature or you pushed a new homepage. That's something that you can take a look at at a very specific link um, and. It's nicer than just having it on your local machine because you can share that with your team um, and everyone can take a look and test it. Uh, at the bottom of the pull request, you'll see, uh, you know, all of the tests are passing for this one, but if something isn't working or if there's an error on something, you'll see it here. You'll be able to click through the details to see what went wrong. This is what it might look like on Circle CI when you're clicking through the details of your build. I know recently I've been working on a lot of decoupled WordPress projects and 
uh, looking at the builds is it's it's a tedious process and I recommend it just to get some practice into it and taking a look at what's happening in each of these scripts is always helpful in case you're debugging. Uh, for this specific uh, pull request, it looks like everything passed and we had a successful deploy to Pantheon and we're also able to get some of those basic uh, visual regression and BHAT tests that are included with build tools. Now, as the dev team is getting ramped up with the project and comfortable working with Composer and GitHub and pull requests, Nassim's thinking, well, I should might as well start teaching them how to get some basic automated testing. She wants them to maybe be able to test all of the new features that they create by writing some BHAT tests. So uh, as always, Pantheon has docs on how to write BHAT testing. And so Nassim decides to create a really simple test to check for a logged in user uh, to open uh, to create a BHAT test. Uh, and so you can watch in this animation where she creates that test, uh, verifying that there is a login uh, button on the user login page. And then she'll open a pull request. She'll push that work up and open a pull request so her team can take a look at what a really simple BHAT test looks like. Uh, I know in practice, we don't always do testing, um, but it is a good idea to have the framework ready to go uh, just because setting these things up can take a lot of time itself. And so if you've already got the framework there, it's a little bit easier and gets you there a little bit quicker. Someone's vacuuming. <laughs> As Nassim and her dev team continue to build the review and test new features, uh, the product owner, Ashwin, can start QAing those features. So he can test those features directly from the pull request. He can click on those multi-dev environments that got spun up and review it there, or he can uh, wait until all of that work gets merged into the staging or the test site, and he can test everything, you know, he can test sprints of work or milestones of work on the test environment. Uh, he can make sure that the features are as described, and then he can pass those on to stakeholders uh, to make sure that they are okay with everything as well. One of the things that I saw uh, as well is that the, the test environment, like the staging environment, or even a multi-dev, is really useful when you're doing a lot of user testing. So back when I used to work for government, we used to do a lot of user testing with constituents. And so uh, it was nice to be able to spin up environments that were uh, disposable, isn't the right word, but reusable and, and to have specific environments, especially if you're doing some kind of A-B testing uh, with your users. Uh, it's helpful to have those environments that you can control and that are not uh, directly related to your dev test live where you might be continuing to work on new features. Uh, this is what multi devs look like on the Pantheon platform. So as you can see, we have one for each of the pull requests that we created. Uh, you can rename these. Uh, you can name these something better. You can name them based on the features uh, that you have. When we made this example, we didn't think to do that, but you know, one of them might be like new homepage or new theme or things like that. Um, and so this is where you can click through and you know look at those multi devs. If there's something that Ashwin feels is ready to go live, he can directly merge it into the live branch uh, from here, live environment from here as well. Uh, finally, uh, you know, that kind of brings us to the end of our, our, our story because once Ashwin does QA and decides everything looks good and forwards it to his stakeholders, uh, they give their approval, the team can go ahead and deploy it live. So that's kind of the small story that I had to share with you uh, for a very basic developer workflow, you know, working on a feature, pushing it up, doing some code reviews, merging it in, and then doing some QA. Um, but if you want something more, there's a lot of places in that workflow where you can uh, you know, add uh, Quicksilver hooks, which allow us to hook into our deployment processes. Maybe you want uh, the deployment from test to live to happen automatically, and then you want to get a notification in Slack or update a JIRA ticket. That's something Quicksilver can help you do. We also didn't really cover visual regression testing, but we do have some docs there. Uh, if you're making a lot of front end changes to existing pages and you want to make sure that the changes that you're making are the ones uh, that you want, um, that's something that you could add as well. Uh, we also have a huge selection of cool Terminus plugins that are brought to you by mostly the community. Uh, we have a lot of great community contributors that build these things uh, that are really helpful depending on your use cases. So there are things that can speed up your work or uh, help you with automated testing or performance, or even to visualize your database uh, in an easier way. Uh, I think we got a question. Ray's asking, are multi-dev environments a paid feature, or does Pantheon still allow 10 free branches for any account? I believe we still allow 10 free branches for any account, and there's also like a, 
a time of coronavirus uh, promotion that's happening. So I think you get multi-dev uh, for a month or three months. I'll have to double check on that. Sorry, Ray. Um, but the other thing we do is we generally allow multi-dev for larger organizations that have dev teams. Um, and so that's something that I think gets discussed with sales on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but I highly do recommend multi-dev. Hopefully it's not too expensive. I wouldn't know I'm on developer relations. <laughs> My job is to make multi-dev sound so good and then help you get it for your organization. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, if you're interested in a Terminus build tools workflow for your team, uh, we have a really great docs guide written by yours truly. <laughs> and I would love feedback on it if you do end up using it, uh, where you can get started, spin up a build tool site, write your first test, uh, you know, uh, merge your project in and start coding. Um, and then I thought this would be a good time to mention some Drupal 9 caveats if we have some people in the audience that uh, are looking into or interested in Drupal 9. Uh, we are supporting it on the platform, uh, but it's not quite integrated into build tools. I am one person maintaining the project. And so there are some options. Uh, you can set up a Drupal 9 site on Pantheon uh, with integrated composer, uh, which is a new feature that will, what, that will manage all of your composer-based assets on the platform. And then you'll also get those upstream updates uh, the an alternative is to set up a D8 site with build tools and then do an upgrade in place to get to D9, which is not the best pathway, uh, but it is a functioning pathway until I can get D9 supported on the build tool side. Uh, and then you can always uh, use it with uh, build tools directly, but there is a start, slight risk where we don't have the right MariaDB version. And so you'd have to remove a patch and add a different patch or use the MySQL module. So just some caveats, if you're interested in those, I'm happy to field questions. Um, I really wish we were up to date on Drupal 9, but we're getting there slowly. Um, and that's all I have for today. Uh, it looks like I spoke really quickly. So we have around 25, 30 minutes for questions. <laughs> I was really nervous. Uh, thanks for having me at Drupal Gov. It's been really cool to do a different style of presentation. So it was really fun to prepare this. Um, and the slides are available at that bit.ly, uh, magical-dev-workflows. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Sugar Overflow, and I'd be happy to receive DMs to see uh, cool projects you're working on, things you wish that the platform had, um, or feedback on this presentation is super welcome as well. Um, and so I can add it to my circuit <laughs> presentation. Uh, so now we have a ton of time for questions. Uh, happy to take them in chat, but also you should feel free to unmute uh, and uh, I can take questions that way. I will stop sharing. Yeah, feel free to um, unmute yourself and ask questions if you have any. You could also unmute and say hi. <laughs> I will share a link to the slides in the chat. Uh, my speaking notes are in the slides. So if I was talking too fast or you missed something or you don't like recordings, you're welcome to just read the notes <laughs> because they're all in there. Ah, so uh, uh, there's a question in the chat from Marco. I currently have build tools working with D8. Yay! Will there be an upgrade path to migrate to D9 and get the latest version of build tools? Yes, there is currently an upgrade in place path from D8 to D9 for build tools. Uh, I think there is a docs guide. Let me just pull that up and then I'll drop that into the chat for you. Uh, so you can do that if you would like to. Okay. Sorry, I did not save that link. Um, there's a specific doc for upgrading a build tool site from D8 to D9. I can you just give me a minute, I'll find that. <laughs> In the meantime, if there are any other questions. Build tools. Uh, Ray, thanks, Galtamar. Any tips on running migrations on Pantheon, in particular, executing custom migration scripts once the site is deployed to Pantheon? So I personally, sorry, I'm going to make a note that I need to find that link 
and share it with you. Uh, I personally haven't done any migrations on Pantheon, so uh, I'm gonna answer this question with the disclaimer that I am not the expert. Um, I'm sure there might be someone at office hours who could answer this better than me. So if, if this answer is not satisfactory, feel free to come to office hours and we can find somebody who has done a migration and can offer more detailed answers. Um, uh, as far as I understand, I think if it's a composer based site, uh, you should be able to put custom scripts into the post uh, deploy command like there is a section in the composer JSON where we recommend adding any scripts for post install, uh, if that's not something you've tried already. I can't find this doc, I saw it the other day. Uh, I wonder if that's a doc that hasn't gone live yet. Um, Marco, are you on Drupal Slack? I send you a message on Drupal Slack app presentation. I'm going to find out if the doc that I was reviewing hasn't been released yet. Uh, and if so, I will find out when it'll come out and uh, get back to you on, on the, the, D9, the D8 to D9 uh, migration for build tools. Awesome. Cool. I will message you on Drupal Slack. I think I may have clicked on a staging link or a multi-dev link for a doc guide <laughs> and thought it was uh, a public document. Sorry about that. Can you elaborate on composer-based implementation will be like and how it will change things? Sure, so the new offering uh, is called integrated composer. And so what I do is build assets. So kind of the composer install stuff that happens uh, on the Circle CI side, I'm going to link to the main docs page for that. Um, so all of that will happen on the platform side. I think it'll just make it a little bit easier for people who aren't as familiar with Composer um, and Composer-based sites uh, to use Composer uh, with their sites. Um, and uh, so you'll it'll it'll manage most of your Composer dependencies, and then you'll still receive. You know, the, the automatic um, updates will still have on the thing. I think at this time you can create new Drew 9 sites with Iterative Composer. Um, uh, that's the one caveat, but they are working on kind of a general, general version for that. I think the only way it would change things, personally, I think it would make a lot of the development and CI workflows a little bit simpler. So you won't have to plug in so many pieces at once. Um, and you'll kind of your your software will talk, your site will talk with the platform in order to manage those dependencies as opposed to having more layers of like a CI and, and, and more. Um, there is there's a part of me that wonders if uh, build tools and integrated composer uh, is is the new future. And that's not a decision we've made yet. So we we're kind of balancing should we, and, and you'll see this in our issue too, because everything's public, but we have this ongoing conversation where we're asking ourselves, should we do build tools and integrated composer for D9 and move away from kind of managing those composer dependencies? Or do pe would people rather have build tools, uh, Drupal 9, Circle CI, and deploying to Pantheon? And we haven't made a decision yet. <laughs> Still waiting for product to release uh, some some more general availability on that. Yeah, thank you for asking questions. It's a it's a quiet crowd. <laughs> oh hi Kevin. I see a friend, a really old friend from like Howdy. origins. Oh, hi from from New Orleans, <laughs> from back in the day. From my first day, yeah, yeah. my first day as a Drupal <laughs> developer in government. Literally my first day. It's been a while. <laughs> Well, I keep looking Thank for you, you but for we, don't, we don't go anywhere anymore, so I can only see you online. Oh, well, this is recorded. <laughs> That's right. It's okay. Yeah. That is okay. It's no, good to hear from you. Our, our agency, we've been on Pantheon for years now, and uh, we're talking with the, with the, the dev crew to move our stuff into uh, this kind of workflow. And so taking our existing sites and then we're planning upgrades from our, we still have a few Drupal 7 sites and moving those to Drupal 9 mm -hmm. and 
building this right in. So this is timely. Great, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, any way I can help, uh, let me know. <laughs> we do um, do um, topic trainings where we'll take um, Pantheon clients and we'll, we'll see what their workflow is right now and then offer some recommendations. Um, so I'm usually on deck for that too. <laughs> okay. It's always a pleasure to get to chat with, with you. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a pleasure to see you, Kevin. Thank you for attending. Uh, if there aren't any other questions, we don't have to record white space. <laughs> yes. Um, thank you again, Fatima. For yeah, thank you our... so much for having me. Yes, and thank you everybody for attending. And uh, there'll be more information about the webinar for July. So check your emails. Yeah, this is great because I got to give a presentation while visiting and my nephew's in the other room and now I'm going to seem really cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, your family never gets to see your work persona. So thank you, Drew Bokov, for allowing me to impress my relatives. Yes. <laughs> thank you again. Okay, it's I'm going to stop recording.